The National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing has prided and marketed itself for the past seven decades on a few core principles. It is a sports league that began with the fundamental premise of outrunning the competition. Whether it was Red Byron speeding away from the bootleggers or Kyle Larson on dirt, every NASCAR champion has mastered this skill. Millions of spectators every year have traveled to the track, consumed beer, and watched a series full of character, tempers, and damn good racing, from the green flag to start NASCAR's biggest race of the year to the checkered flag to crown the winner of the Bill France Cup. Others were fascinated by 43 colorful stock cars carrying the colors of Kellogg's, the Home Depot, UPS, and Coors Light, just to name a few. All of this centered around tradition and family values, not just with Petty, Earnhardt, Allison, and Elliott, but also with the families that passed down the tradition of NASCAR culture to their kids and grandkids. Chances are that your father was a fan of Alan Kuwicki, Rusty Wallace, or Mark Martin, and passed on that tradition of rooting for a driver and engaging in the series to you. However, it's safe to say the next generation of NASCAR racing is here. Now why is this you're asking? NASCAR has gone through so many changes from 2001 to 2021. Why? Yeah. What makes this era special is that this will be an era that will look to stick to those traditional values, but with a twist. Do so in a way that attracts a unique set of fans to the series, particularly the younger generation of the Millennials and Gen Z. Demographics that are a much different breed than the devoted fan base NASCAR has lured in over the past seven decades. I'm not saying this demographic is good, and I'm also not saying it's bad, but this is simply the audience NASCAR has its eyes tightly locked onto. In the past, where they've struck out with the younger crowd, NASCAR's next generation will be defined by its execution of that philosophy in seven key pillars. Beginning with the thing that stems the NASCAR Next Generation label. The brand new NASCAR Next Gen car is a car that is unlike anything we've ever seen. Many are hailing this as the great engineering reset since this is indeed a spec car. The days of teams building chassis in the Cup Series are numbered like painted cars and five lug nuts. And in this digital era, it's not hard to find a NASCAR fan outraged over something absolutely silly, example the door number placement. What you won't see them complaining about is a fundamental art of stock car racing that is now extinct from the NASCAR Cup Series. This is something that dates back to even the moonshiners. NASCAR has historically been a series rooted in pushing the edge. Morgan McClure Motorsports probably doesn't cap off their Daytona 500 Dynasty without the X-Pipe. This innovation by Dr. Gas led to a historic performance from the yellow Kodak car, one that is now in the NASCAR history books by beating the Goliaths of Hendrick and Richard Childress purely off of car building. A phenomenal feat for a true underdog. With that, if an old school NASCAR fan came up to me today and said I stopped watching NASCAR because they embrace spec cars instead of the unique art of car building, I would honestly understand. Then again, the owner and the manufacturer championships have been degraded over the past decade to where it may or may not even be worthy of a mention on the final broadcast of this season. And some of that is largely in part due to car culture declining in the United States as younger people are less likely to care about Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota as they are Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, and any kind of social media or some type of Nike brand. So with that demographic, the most important thing with this car is whether the next gen car can be a race car. Any NASCAR sanctioned vehicle can be a good stock car. The Generation 6 car was just that, built for US dealerships hoping to sell cars on Monday. However, it did not fit my and many other NASCAR fans definition of a race car. The racing product this car produced over the past 9 years was abysmal with a good season a dime a dozen. This is why I do not partake mostly in the NASCAR aero package tug of war. It doesn't matter how many shiny dresses or different colors of lipstick you apply to a pig. At the end of the day, it's an ugly, unattractive animal that will, every Sunday, create dirty air with 39 other pigs until it's given the axe. Who are you? This is the fate of a NASCAR stock car. 
there's a lot to be optimistic about the product coming from NASCAR's next generation car. But if it doesn't at least show some promise next season, the series could find itself stuck in neutral with the younger generation like it was with a car tomorrow and like it was with a generation 6 car. Still, if this car strikes out and it doesn't exactly live up to expectations, the eye candy to lure in the next generation fan returns to the new approach to schedule making. The cookie cutter intermediate explosion is comparable to the MLB stadium boom that happened in that same era. It got people through the turnstiles, but now, even some of the biggest markets have seen their cookie cutter races drop due to poor attendance. Texas, Dover, Michigan, Pocono, and New Hampshire all lost race dates. Charlotte's October race moved from the mile and a half to the Roval layout. Auto Club is overgoing a trans configuration into a short track following the conclusion of its 2022 race. Then you have Atlanta, which is probably going to be the worst track on the Cup Series schedule with the all-new repave. Turning one of the better mile and a half tracks in NASCAR into a mini Daytona all for the sake of instant gratification. Sitting down to watch a 500 mile race uninterrupted today is as challenging as climbing Mount Everest with video games, social media, and the many new dopamine stimulating activities that have came into fruition in this 21st century. NASCAR today has a completely different audience to entertain than they did back in the 1990s. And if they fail, Generation Z, you know what they're going to do. They're going to pull up TikTok and they're going to lose more precious brain cells to these lunatics. What are you doing? Seriously. The good news is NASCAR has done a better job at creating a captivating schedule compared to the copy and paste calendars of the mid 2010s. The replacements for the intermediate tracks have been Circuit of the Americas and Road America. NASCAR even sacrificed the tradition and heritage of the Brickyard 400, a race that has not had a good product on the track to instead go to the Indianapolis road course configuration. The thing about road courses with Generation Z and Millennials is that they are not only shorter races, but these tracks also do a great job at showcasing the natural beauty of the states as compared to the typical cookie cutter mile and a half. Another enticing element is the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for this February's running of the Bush Clash. Now, to be honest, this race is going to be a flat out gimmick. There will be cars getting dumped for position and for the lead. It's inevitable with this configuration and the type of racing it is going to produce. Honestly, the whole thing to me is just going to be a glorified TikTok clip or YouTube short. Then again, this race is not targeted towards diehard fans like myself. Instead, it's for the Los Angeles audience unfamiliar to NASCAR, but familiar to Hollywood type action and drama. Racing in a quarter mile bore ring might just bring that wow factor to hook some new eyeballs onto the series. Let's take for example Formula One. The Drive to Survive Netflix show added drama and thematic elements to the NBA of racing, let's be honest, resulting in jam-packed grandstands for qualifying. Formula One has skyrocketed in popularity in the United States, showing there is still an itch for motorsports that needs to be scratched. Potentially, NASCAR embracing this chaotic nature of a race in the Los Angeles Coliseum can be their drive to survive moment. And to an extent, it's already paying off. Over 60% of the people attending this race so far will be at their first NASCAR race ever. This race, if successful, will at minimum boost Daytona 500 television ratings and attendance for NASCAR's return to the Los Angeles market three weeks later at the Auto Club Speedway. This race should be a treat for all that plan to attend the LA Exhibition event. Just be sure to steer clear of the open needles and human waste on your walk to the Coliseum. And also, if you plan on buying some headsets or some earplugs before the race through Amazon, don't bet on them getting there in time. How the next generation NASCAR fan chooses to consume media will also be another pillar to the influence of NASCAR's future. Sometime this year, NASCAR is believed to begin its negotiations for its first new TV deal since the current deal signed back in 2013. A time where social media was in its infancy, TikTok and the idea of the short vertical video were completely foreign, as well as the practice of streaming. 
millions have cut the cable in favor of consuming older news, TV shows, and sports via streaming. The big oligopolies in television have noticed this and have created their own streaming platforms in the past couple years to combat this new gold rush for media. NBC as Peacock, Fox as 2B TV, CBS as Paramount Plus, Warner Media has HBO Max and ABC ESPN as both ESPN Plus as well as Hulu for its sporting events. These are pairings fans are likely going to have to memorize to consume NASCAR media over the next few decades. Or as America's trust in mainstream media continues to plunge with more Don Lemons than Walter Cronkite's, maybe we get to a day where the big networks are no longer where NASCAR's next generation is at flocking instead to Amazon, Netflix, and YouTube TV, maybe even the independent content creator in a pipe dream scenario. Does that mean regular television should become obsolete? Absolutely not. Streaming, however, will need to be emphasized in order to attract more millennials, Gen Z, and the upcoming generation. Getting NASCAR to a new set of eyeballs, like with the other pillars, is the clear-cut goal of entering the world of streaming. Something lost in that large step that NASCAR is likely going to take in terms of media is that it is going to allow for a more valuable television deal, assuming more advertisers will invest in the broadcast since all 36 races will have an option for streaming. More big money to broadcast the weekly tour could enhance a touchy subject in the NASCAR fandom. That being, of course, the charter system. The system itself, it is not going anywhere. As much as people like to delude themselves, this is something that's here to stay. Owners have wanted this for decades and each charter carries a value of nearly $10 million. That's a lot of George Washington's into the owner's pockets should they choose to cash out of the NASCAR Cup Series. If NASCAR can get to a point where they're executing in the three pillars aforementioned, Finding new avenues of revenue to capitalize amidst the boom, that could become a priority. One way is obviously through expansion, as NASCAR might choose to expand the charter system by one team for year, kind of like how the NFL or the NHL expands their franchises, awarding it to the highest bidder who puts out a plan to be competitive. Such expansion should be welcomed by diehard fans, as this means that the field will creep closer to 43 or at least full 40 car fields like we saw at the very beginning of the charter system. However, in all likelihood, this is also going to attract new fans to the series as new teams usually bring something new to the NASCAR Cup Series. We saw that last year with 2311 Racing with Michael Jordan becoming NASCAR's first African-American principal owner of a team since 1973. Plus, of course it's Michael Jordan. People are going to tune in just to see how good the Michael Jordan racing team does in the NASCAR Cup Series. Then you also have Trackhouse Racing and the excitement Mr. Worldwide Pitbull brought to the NASCAR Cup Series garage in 2021. Potentially, the future new teams of NASCAR's next generation could feature one or both of the next two pillars. The first being advancements in electric power as fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas are projected to run out in this century. One figure that will influence the future of NASCAR is the 2021 Time Person of the Year, Elon Musk. His car company Tesla Motors is pioneering the way for electric cars, and in a few years, more people could be going electric than they are with your typical gas guzzles you see on the road today. Now you guys are well aware I'm not afraid to put out a lot of bold statements, but I believe Tesla will enter the NASCAR Cup Series at some point and become one of the top manufacturers. The question isn't if, but when. When does NASCAR flip the switch and go green? This is not an easy question to answer considering Sunoco spends millions of dollars every single year to fuel every NASCAR race car in the field. Embracing electric power also means you part ways with Mobile One, Pennzoil, and Vaveline. These are loyal sponsors beloved by diehard fans that have had a massive presence in this series for decades, some even since the beginning of this series. The big money that these companies provide will only be rejected should the electric car movement spread like wildfire, something that might be a decade or two away. 
Still, if the next generation car, it proves to be a high success vehicle. This is a car that produces some good racing. This could quite possibly be the last NASCAR car ever to run on racing fuel. The hypothetical generation 8 mobile eventually marking as the first NASCAR stock car to be run solely on electric. Embracing electric is something that must be done, but it must be done in a timely and proper manner, potentially one that is dictated by the next generation. And that is much like the sixth pillar, and that is technological advancements. There is one innovation in particular right now that has gotten a lot of investments and resources just in the past few months, making the potential endless for such a product. Back in October, Mark Zuckerberg announced the creation of the metaverse. Now what is the metaverse you ask? It is defined as a virtual reality space in which users can interact with a computer generated environment and other users. Technically, the metaverse is already here, just in a beta form at the moment. Do not expect it to be like that for long. You just look at the evolution of video games and movies. 30 years ago, a NASCAR video game was a pixelated car on a pixelated track completely foreign from the realistic looking cars and eye candy backgrounds that make the NASCAR ignition game look like it's the real thing. Forgetting of course the massive glitches and the absolutely horrible gameplay that has come from it. Now despite the massive and in many cases justified backlash, there are many positives to a virtual reality world. Should it of course remain rooted in the premise as something that complements the real world. In that case, NASCAR in the metaverse can open the racing league up to new opportunities and new fans. Now, if it becomes a replacement to the world God created, or the beautiful planet of Earth for you non-religious viewers, then things might be screwed. At some point, I will probably put out an in-depth video on how the metaverse could impact NASCAR both good and bad. Because this will likely be life-changing technology like the automatic dishwasher, like the television, and like the smartphone and all the bells and whistles that came with it. So NASCAR's Gen 7 car produces great racing. The schedule is fantastic. NASCAR's new television deal brings in new money and new world advancements to the racing series we all know and love. But even with all that momentum, Millennials and Gen Z, they are not watching the NASCAR Cup Series. That's right, even after all that, this series could still crash and burn like the Hindenburg without colorful drivers and the marketing of those characters. Without that, NASCAR does not have a flavor to it. And if you ask many current or former fans today, that's the one thing that sucks about modern NASCAR. 1990s, 2000s NASCAR marketing is dead. Gone are the days where you look in the Office Depot coupon book every Sunday and see Carl Edwards. Gone are the commercials where Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Steve Park would make fun of Michael Waltrip to promote Napa Auto Parts. So far, modern NASCAR marketing is seeing an onslaught of Bush beer ads every race with the Bush guy. Instead of Anheuser-Busch's driver who has a lot of personality, Kevin Harvick. It has introduced the stereotype that NASCAR drivers lack personality and that is not the case. You have some intriguing characters and drivers such as Kyle Busch, Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Kyle Larson, and yes, Chase Elliott. This dude has a dry sense of humor that gets put to the side because Napa Auto Parts and Hooters do not know how to market NASCAR's most popular driver. On top of that, none of these drivers are household names. None of them, with the exception of Bubba Wallace and Brandon Brown for reasons not pertaining to their driving skill. It's sad because if you ask any random person on the street to name a racing driver in the 2020s, they're probably going to name the entire Formula One grid and a few retired drivers such as Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt Jr. before defending cup champion Kyle Larson. I'll tell you this, if NASCAR is going to evolve into the next generation with millennials and Gen Z, they need to get their drivers out there. Maybe it's through the cryptocurrency craze of the 2020s currently going on. Or it's through YouTube ads like Jimmy Johnson with Carvana or Max Verstappen with Cash App. Heck, if there's any Cup Series driver that wants to become a TikTok star, by all means necessary, NASCAR should jump on it. Not that I'm going to watch, but it's something big for the future. Because NASCAR's next generation, one that consists of tradition with a twist, is going to be driven by the drivers. As it was in the 1970s with Richard Petty as it was in the 1990s with Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon, 
and as it will need to be with whatever driver may emerge as the true face of this unique next generation of NASCAR racing. So anyways, this is Nathan for NRF Productions signing out. And just remember guys, life's a beach and then you drive.